So in the last video, I talked about anchor pane. This video will be about HBox and VBox. So HBoxes and VBoxes is kind of my favorite uh, layout system. So let me show you why. So we tried in the last video to do some dynamic, uh, putting things dynamically into um, anchor panes like this. And it was kind of hard to get them to scale properly uh, when we resize the screen. So one of the cool thing about H boxes and V boxes is that they are actually, actually they work only in one way. The V box is putting things vertically and the H box is putting things horizontally. And this is quite easy to work with. So let's try to change our sample FXML file. So I'll just go into my scene builder and I'll just try to remove everything that's in here. I'll get some warnings and I'll change this anchor pane um, into something like an HBox. Okay, so I'll put the HBox in here and Maybe I need to remove the anchor paint first. Put the H box in here like that. So now I have an H box and let's just see how that works. So if I go for button, just as an example of something, it will go in there and then it will go there and there. Okay. So we can put other elements in here and it will always go horizontally like that. So if we look at the button here, we can see the interesting thing is the HBox constraints here. We can say that how should it grow horizontally? Should it just inherit? Should it always try to grow or sometimes? And then there's the margin. So if I set a margin of, uh, let's say 20 here, we can easily put like 20 pixels between this and the next button. So if we did that for all buttons at the same time, said, okay, let's put this at 20. That didn't work very well. If we put it at 20, then they will space out evenly with uh, 20 between them. Also, we can use um, for this um, anchor pain, we can also use the padding, like we can use 20 here and we can use 20 here, and then we can make things uh, line up nicely like this. And if we look at that in a preview, of course, we can see that it also scales pretty nicely. I know I can't really see the text, but it, they're kind of fixed, but, but they can scale uh, in, in the sense that they can scale horizontally. Okay. So it's pretty cool if you want something like this. So you could imagine if you have something like an H box and you want like a menu or something like that, you could put them in here, these different elements and they would uh, look nice uh, like this. So also what I wanted to show you is that now I put the buttons manually in here. So let's try to do it more automatically. So I go back to code and I'll give this like a top pane. I'll call this top pane, save that, and then go back to the code. And I already have the one called top pane. So I'm going to keep that a button. I'm not going to use this layout. I'm not going to use. So instead of green pane, I'm going to say top pane. This was my H box. And now I create some buttons. Let's try to see what that looks like. So now something weird is going on. There's nothing really in here right now. And the reason being is I forgot something very simple. Let me just open up this. Because I deleted the, the former top pane, I forgot to set the controller, so it doesn't load the controller. So we need to say FX uh, controller and then sample controller. This is the control I'm going to use. OK, 
And I said, okay. Of course, I also forgot to change in the controller that this is actually an H-Box, like that. So now I cannot get children and add. So let's see. That's of course, because I need to import the H-Box in here, like that. Okay. So we should be able to get children and add on all because um, this get children comes from the node and everything is a node in here. So that should be available. Let's try to run it again. And now we can see that all the buttons are here and notice how they scale nicely. Like with the anchor pane, they kind of just pushed out the anchor pane, but here they kind of scale. And because we used HBox, they will scale in a horizontal way like this, not this way, but this way. So let, let's try to add an, uh, a V-Box as well. So I'll just open up uh, this again. And now I have my H-Box here. Let's just put like um, two more, like a H-Box, put that in here. And I'll also put a V box in here. So let me show you the power of this. So now I have like, I have like an H box for the top layout. And then I have an H box inside of that and a V box inside of that. So, so now we can see that the H box lays out the H box and V box horizontally. And uh, this one will also lay out horizontally and this will lay out vertically. So let's look at that. Let's look at the properties here. There's no properties, the layout, I mean. We can see that there's a preferred width and height here. And we can also see there's a preferred width and height here. So if we go and say, let's just give it a color because it's so hard to see. So I'm going to use background color for the V box. And I'm going to say that it's going to be purple. And then for that, that purple is not very, let's go for something a bit lighter. And then for the H box, we're going to set the background color to yellow, something like this. Then it's easier to see them. Okay. So we can see that this uh, V box has a size here. So if we're going to say, instead of setting this to a hundred, we're just going to set it to computed size and we can see that, that now it collapses. We can also say preferred height, computed size, and now it's collapsed uh, completely. Let's give this uh, box here a name. It's called V box. So let's say, so we'll just call it, um, V box sign, bad naming again. And now we have, and it's kind of collapsed. So we can see that if we want to run the program now, it's, um, yeah, this is because this is going into the background box right now. So let's try to add it to that cyan box instead. So I'm just going to copy this and then going for V box and say V box cyan. I think that's the name. I need to import that from JavaFX. And then instead of using the H box, I'm going to add that to the V box cyan instead. So we'll put it inside of that box. And what you can see now is that the width of this box now fills out the size of the buttons. So if the buttons gets any bigger, for example, if I put some more text into them, it will just automatically fill out uh, this uh, here. And it will also, let's look at the scaling. It will actually scale pretty nicely. Um, not in this direction though, but it will scale in this direction. And you can see it also fills out. There's no padding around it. So it fills to the bottom like this. So they automatically fill out each other, these uh, boxes, and you'll find that this is really nice to work with when you're working with layouts.
So you can do almost anything that you want with this. And it's very easy to work with. There's no surprises in that. Kind of scales like you would expect it to. You can also go for a minimum size. Like if we go into Scene Builder, back into Scene Builder, and now I can't click it, so I'll just click over here. And we can see the go back to the layout. And we can say that the minimum width should be let's say like 150 pixels and the minimum height. Um, let's use the computed height because that will go for the entire screen. So I'll save that and we'll go back and let's try to run it. And it will never get smaller than what we said. You see before it kind of pressed it, but now it's not going to get any smaller. See, although I press it, I cannot make it smaller than this. These are the 150 pixels that I forced it to be. And we can do the same thing with the with the other one. So let's go in here, scene builder. Go in here, click this one. It says preferred, we can go for this and set the height, computed size and computed size like this. And now we run the code. We can see that we have a minimum size now of 200 for the yellow one. So we can kind of press it together, but Still, there's a minimum size for the uh, the yellow one, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. Let's just go, yeah. So you see, it's just called min width in here. Okay, so sometimes you would want to have something. Let's go back and look at the layout. So sometimes you would have something more like uh, Windows Explorer, like if we go into this PC, we can see that things are flowing and when we move it around, it will automatically do like this. So this is not really possible with the HBox and VBox. It is quite hard to do. So if you want something dynamic like this, then we need to actually um, use something else and that is actually the one called the uh, flow pane. But I'll come back to that. But that is a really cool thing for doing something like that. So that's it for the HBox and VBox. There's a lot of other stuff, of course, you can do. Um, and I'll go kind of go through that in the other videos as well. But um, you can see there's a lot of other settings that you can play around with. But most of it uh, pertains to all of the containers. So what is important is to notice that there's a difference in the top here with the constraints based on the box they are inside of. So this is what to be careful uh, when you look at that. And then it's just to play around with it and see if you can get into and, and you can, of course, mix as well. You can use an anchor pane and put V boxes and H boxes inside of that no problems. So that's it. So for the next video, I'll be looking at the tile pane, which has very limited usage, but it's very easy to use. And it, I'll show a use case where it's, it's pretty nice to use. So thank you for watching and see you for the next video.